بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم الغني وأنتم الفقراء والله الغني وأنتم الفقراء والله الغني وأنتم الفقراء تتولوا يستبدل قوما غيركم ثم لا يكونوا ثم لا يكونوا امثالكم. ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله. وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألهى وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين Thank you brothers and sisters for inviting me to your uh, beautiful mosque and your wonderful congregation and uh, the topic for today is near and dear to every heart of every Muslim. How do we reconnect with the Book of God, with the Quran? Let's get right into it because we only have 30 minutes. As it stands, human beings, we as Muslims, we are distracted by this dunya, distracted by this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of his beautiful verses, he, he sums up the entire world for you in six things, six points. He says, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُمٌ وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Allah SWT says, this whole dunya that you guys are so distracted by. No games right now, buddy. Okay? It's okay, distraction is one of the things we're talking about. This dunya, that we love so much, that we compete for, that we vie with one another, that we are distracted by, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it is nothing but laib, play. Walahu, wasting time. Wazina, sparkly, fancy things. Watafakhurun baynakum. Trying to be, trying to make yourself look better than your friend. Watakathurun fil amwal and trying to make more money than others. Well, awlad, and trying to have more kids than others. This dunya, brothers and sisters, is not what we should be competing for. We often hear young Muslims, and even middle-aged Muslims say, we have difficulty reconnecting with the Quran. We, we try to memorize the Quran. We try to read the Quran, but we're having difficulty getting that. The intention is there. The desire to reconnect with Allah is there, but we have difficulty. And this is because we are full of sin. And the Quran is Aziz. Listen to what Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu said. He said, لَوْ طَهُرَتْ قُلُوبُنَا مَا شَبِعَتْ مِنْ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ If your heart was purified from sin, automatically you would never have enough of the words of Allah. You would never get enough of the Qur'an. So what does that tell you when you open the book of Allah and you look, and we all have experienced this, and you start reading, then your chest gets tight. Then you close the book. You wanted to read more, but you could not. That means there are sins. You are doing something wrong in your life. What is the other meaning of that we just mentioned, Al-Qur'an Aziz? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as Aziz in the Qur'an. What does Aziz mean? Who knows? Yes. Most wise. Most wise is Al Hakim. What is Aziz? Mighty. Mighty. Okay. What else? Huh? No, not loyal. This is not the meaning of Aziz. Huh? Proud. Overpowering. Always wins. Strong. All of these meanings. 
Allah described His own book, Quran, His words as Aziz. Also, He said, "Inna ladina kafaru bi dhikri lama jaahum, wa innahu lakitabun Aziz." Let's contemplate this verse. Those who reject the reminder when it comes to them, indeed, I swear, Allah is saying, it is an overpowering book. Kitabun Aziz. What does that mean? It means mighty, strong, overcomes, cannot be resisted. The word of Allah, the word of God, cannot be resisted, cannot be defeated, imparts honor to whosoever takes what is in the book, imparts dignity and strength to others. It is the source of power and not the receiver of it. What does that mean? Alif Lam Mim. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ Why did Allah say ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ and not هَذَا الْكِتَابِ? When you say هَذَا الْكِتَابِ, it's close to you. It's right there. When you say ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ, Allah is pointing away from you and saying Alif Lam Mim in Surah Al-Baqarah, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ, that book. Not this book, that book. Why did Allah say the Quran, that book, instead of this book right in front of you? Because you have to go to it. You have to go and get it. You have to take it strong. You are not, you cannot wait for the Quran to come to you. You have to make the first step. Let me give you a hadith, which some of the young kids, are, they have pens and paper, so that their fathers can be happy that they are writing, or maybe they are, intention is good. Prophet said, the example of the one who befriends the Qur'an is like the camel that needs to be tied. <laughs> if he stays close to it, he will hold on to it. But if he leaves it, it will run away. Prophet is telling you the Qur'an is Aziz. He, it will run away from you. If you are having difficulty, brother or sister, reading the Qur'an, if you are having difficulty memorizing the Qur'an, know that it is because you have abandoned the Qur'an. You have not come to it. You have not made a strong effort to get there. So the first thing we must realize is we are distracted by this dunya. We want to play. We want to have fun. But the real work is connecting with Allah. And we all know the hadith, the famous hadith, the one who comes to Allah walking, he comes to him running. And the hadith is longer than that. But the point is, you have to make the first step to go towards the Quran and then Allah will come towards you. Meaning, He will bring your, the ability to, to reconnect with this book. He will bring that to you. There's an ayah in the Quran which is very scary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Rasulullah said, or will say, alayhi salatu wa salam, wa qala rasulu, ya rabbi, inna qawmi attakhadu hadha al-Qur'an mahjura. The Prophet ﷺ complained to Allah, Muhammad ibn Abdullah ﷺ, complained to Allah about us. What did he say? He said, Oh my Lord, indeed my people have abandoned your book, have abandoned the Quran. So some of the scholars of tafsir say, this is the statement of Rasulullah on the Day of Judgment. He will say to Allah, Oh Allah, my ummah abandoned the book. And some scholars say he said this during his time preaching to Quraysh. Now, what does it mean to abandon the book? Now, I'm going to upset some of you now. But we need a little bit of shaking. How do you know if you are one who abandoned the book or one who has taken the book? How do you know? Yes. The one who had abandoned it just like cleans it, put it on the shelf. Looks at it, but the one who takes it and actually memorizes it and actually memorizes by heart and feeling hurts him. Jazakallah khair. How old are you? Ten. Ten, mashallah. May Allah reward his father for this knowledge. The one who abandons the book is the one who polishes it, dusts it off, puts it on the shelf. These are his words. And the one who takes the book is the one who reads it, memorizes it, and does what is in it. But how do you know? What criteria? How often should you finish the book of Allah? How often should you read the book of Allah from beginning to end with understanding? How often? Three times a year. Three times a year? Okay, that's a good guess. What else? Seven times and what? Seven times every day? No, I don't think so. Once a month. Very good. So? 
Twice what? A month. Okay, very good answer too. Once a year. Okay, good guess. Yes? Every day. Good guess also. The best answer is once a month. What is the hadith? By the way, we do not bring anything from ourselves. Rasulullah approached Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu and he said to him, so Rasulullah is curious. Rasulullah wants to know the status of his companions. How often, O oh Ibn Umar, do you finish the book of Allah? How often do you read it from the beginning until the end, complete with understanding and contemplation? So Ibn Umar said to Rasulullah, and compare yourself now to the companions and wonder why Allah gave them what he gave them in 23 years. And we are where we are today. He said, I finish it once a day. So Rasulullah said to him, and Rasulullah is a mercy to mankind. He knows that his ummah cannot handle that once a day. So he says to Ibn Umar, he says to him, your nafs has a right upon you. Your spouse has a right upon you. And your neighbor or your visitor has a right upon you. Meaning, if you're reading the Quran once every day, you do not have time to take care of your own self. You do not have time to take care of your wife. And you do not have time to take care of your neighbor. So he said, I recommend, who is speaking? Is he going to recommend that which is hard for his ummah or which is easy? easy. What do you think? Easy. What was his style, Rasulullah? Give you the hard or give you the easy? easy? He said, if there's ever a choice between hard and easy, I would pick the easy. That's what Rasulullah says. That is the menhaj of Rasulullah in everything. So is he going to give Ibn Umar the maximum he should do or the minimum? minimum. The minimum. So he says to him, do not do what you do once a day. But finish it once a month. So is he giving the minimum or the maximum? Minimum. minimum. Now, brothers and sisters, you see what is happening to the Muslims in the world today. It is nobody's fault. Stop blaming everyone and blame yourself. And look at yourself. And what I'm telling you is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. You had a blessing, you had a ni'mah. Allah changed this blessing for his ummah because they changed what was in themselves. You left the book of Allah, the book of God, so you were made to be low on earth. And if you come back to the book of God, then he will strengthen you. This is the sunnah of Allah. And it is good. It is good. So, how many people in the ummah of Muhammad today do you think finish the book of Allah in one month? Majority or minority? Small minority. Oh, you, 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 you're going too fast for me, okay? Now, would you say a large minority or a very small minority? Would you say very small or extremely small? Now, this is all anecdotal. I don't know, I don't have a study. But you know your community. You know yourselves. The overwhelming majority of Muslims do not finish the Qur'an once a month. Do not even finish the Qur'an once every six months. Do not even finish the Qur'an once a year. I bet you, and this is just anecdotal, and I am a Muslim in the community just like you. If you disagree, tell me. The majority of the Muslims in the world today have not finished the Book of Allah from front to back with contemplation even once in their whole life. Correct. What do you think? Correct. Am I wrong? No. If I'm wrong, tell me. No. So, subhanAllah, you know, we like to point fingers as an ummah. We have to be honest. It's his fault. It's their fault. This is why what is happening to us, that is not true. Who is the one who controls all things? Allah. Allah. Who is the one who brings the circumstances? Allah. Who is the one who brings the results? Who is the one who gives success? Allah. If you go away from Allah, He will put your face in the dirt. So that you may wake up out of mercy and wake up and come back to Him. And if you go to Allah, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What will Allah do by punishing you? If you, believe, if you make shukr and you believe. Allah does not want people to suffer, but it is them who bring the suffering on themselves by abandoning, abandoning the book of Allah and Allah and the sunnah of His Messenger, Allah SWT says, if the people only believed and were good, righteous, we would have opened up for them. Look what Allah says. 
the blessings from the sky and the earth. There would be no hunger or poverty in the world if the people obeyed Allah. Who is saying this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. So, how do you know if you are one who has abandoned the book? If you do not even attempt to finish the book once a month, you are min hajaratul Qur'an. You are from the one who has abandoned the book. May Allah have mercy on our ummah. Amen. And may Allah bring us back to his book the way we should be. So this wasn't supposed to be negative. I just wanted to wake you up a little bit to show you our status. Okay? And where we need to go. But a Muslim is never pessimistic but always optimistic with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring his ummah back to where it should be. But we must take the first step. The Quran will not come to you. Young guys, how much of you have memorized the Quran? How many of you? The whole Quran? Have. Good, mashallah, very good. There's good signs. Yes. Whatever, tell me. You can estimate. You got half? Okay, mashallah, barakallahu lak. Okay? How many of the adults have half the Quran? How many have the full Quran? One quarter. We must get that. Make dua today. Make intention that you will get it. Inshallah, we will excite you enough that Allah will, you will make the right dua and Allah will bless you. The companions used to compete for the good things that Allah loves. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the righteous, أُولَٰئِكَ يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَهُمْ لَهَا سَابِقُونَ It is these, the righteous, who hasten to do good deeds and compete with one another in doing so. You should compete with your Muslim brother and sister to do better good deeds than them for the sake of Allah. You should not compete to have a bigger home. You should not compete to have a, a prettier car. You should not compete to have more money or a better job. But you should compete in the things that Allah loves. You should compete in how much Quran you know. You should compete in how much you pray. You should compete in how much you fast. You should find out what others are doing and do better than them. Allah subhanahu wa وَسَابِقُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ Sorry, سَابِقُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ Another ayah, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ Compete with one another, race for Jannah. Compete with one another, run for Jannah. In dunya, don't run, just walk. For akhra, run and compete with one another. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, uh, uh, before I get to that, Allah said an ayah that you all know, you young guys and young women. In Surah al Naziat, He said what? Wa fi dhalika, what? Fal yatanafasil mutanafisun. Allah knows that we like to compete. Yes, you know this ayah? No, what does that mean? A good question. What does that mean? I am explaining now. Wa fi dhalika, and in Jannah, fal yatanafasil mutanafisun. Should those who compete who find themselves competitive, they should compete in Jannah. Not in basketball, not in football. You can play those sports and you need to play those sports. Those are good sports for your body, for camaraderie. But do not compete with one another, meaning vie and hate one another for this dunya. But compete with one another in goodness, meaning to be better than your fellow Muslim for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of the people to say you are better, but compete in silence and in secrecy. You know someone memorized the whole Quran, you will not die until you memorize the whole book of Allah. Even if you are 70 years old, and I don't see anyone here who is 70, which is a good sign, by the way, for the community. Most of you have, have black hair, I see. That's great. Some of you don't have hair anymore, but that's okay. Right? But, when the community is full of youth, then that is a good sign. And I see them sitting up front and not usually the youth try to hide in the back. You have, you have trained them well. That is good. May Allah So, the messenger taught us to compete for two things. Out of all the things in this dunya, what do you think Rasulullah told us to compete in? What do you think? Good. What else? Memorize the Quran. Yeah, but not in this specific hadith. But yes, you should compete in salah. But he said, 
You should not envy anyone. What does envy mean? Want what they have. But the good envy, there is bad envy too. The bad envy is you hope that they lose what they have. Nonsense, right? The good envy or ghibta is to want what the other person has without asking that he lose it. And God has the power to give you just like he gave him. Rasulullah said, there should, you should not envy anyone except two people. Who are they? The one who learns the Quran and teaches it to others. That one you should envy, meaning you should want to be like him. What is the other one that you should be envious of? The NBA star? What do you think? Football star? The rock star? Huh? Who should you envy? Yes, sister in the bag, young sister. Don't put your hand up if you don't know. Yes. Who is the other one that you should try to be like? Huh? Yes. Yes, the Prophet said you should try to be like him, but that's not what I mean. In general, among your community, I will tell you. The one, yes, charity. The one who has money and spends it in the way of Allah. Let me give you the word, the, 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 the actual hadith because it's nice. خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ And the best of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and teaches it. And then he said, لَا حَسَدَ إِلَّا فِتْنَتَيْنِ There is no envy except in two people. رَجُلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ يَقُومُ بِهِ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ وَآنَاءَ النَّهَارِ وَرَجُلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا فَهُوَ يُنْفِقُهُ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ وَآنَاءَ النَّهَارِ فِي حَقِّهِ Meaning, the man who learns Qur'an and teaches it day and night, and the man who spends his money day and night to help those who are poor, to help those in need, in a way that would please God. Those are the two you should strive to be like. So how are the companions? After all, Rasulullah is our best example. And you may say, I cannot be like Rasulullah, he is too good. Well, the companions of the messenger, they are hujjah on you. Hujjah means, you may say, Rasulullah is way stronger than me and better than me. But the companions are like you. They are made of the same thing as you, as is Rasulullah, but Rasulullah was guided by Allah. We understand. Try to be like Rasulullah, but you have no excuse not to be like the companions. Try as much as you can. How were the companions with the Book of Allah? I will share with this, you, this, you this hadith, which I learned when I was young, like your age. And it really impacted me. This hadith is so beautiful. مَن لَا يَتَغَنَّى بِالْقُرْآنِ فَلَيْسَ مِنَّا Very profound hadith that when I heard it when I was young, it really hit me hard. And all of the hadith of Rasulullah are treasures. Whosoever, let me see if I can translate this right. Whosoever does not hum the Quran, he is not from us. Yet the hunna literally means that he sings. But of course, this is not what Rasulullah means singing in the singing that you understand. So it better translated in English as humming. The one who does not hum the Quran, and look, he left it open constantly, he is not from us. What does that mean, from us? From who? From the mu'min, not the Muslim. Because you are Muslim so long as you say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But you are not from the mu'mineen, the true believers, unless you are one who hums the Qur'an. Now don't get upset with me. This is the hadith of Rasulullah. So what does that mean? And this is particularly important for the young people. You often hear the question, very popular question, is music halal or haram? This is a foolish question. You know why? You should not even think or ask this question if you are one who is a student of the Qur'an. Because Allah created in your brain a receptacle that likes good sounds and good tones, likes musical or melody, likes melody. So you can either use that for Qur'an or you can use that to waste your time and listen to music which is full of nothing. <coughs> and that's the worst case scenario, that it's full of nothing. Most of the music today is full of messages that are not good for our youth. 
and you know what I mean. And suddenly the young kids started looking at me very intensely. You see? Because they know. So do not ask, is music halal or haram? If you are listening to music, you are humming the music. Correct? Because you cannot help it. You are human. If you hear something that is good, you will keep saying what is good. I know, I know, those who listen to music, they often complain, they say, I can't get the song out of my head. I don't even want to say it anymore. Right? Why? You know, right? Because it's stuck in there. Why? Allah gave you an amazing mechanism to learn His words, to learn His book, and you wasted your time. That is why any time Rasulullah was around any music, Allah would make him what? Sleep. Fall asleep. Rasulullah's ears never heard music. Why? Because it would compete. It would compete with that which is beneficial, the word of Allah. So this hadith has two meanings. The one who does not beautify the Qur'an when he recites. Not everyone is gifted with a good voice. So this is not the full meaning of the hadith. This is the shallow meaning. The one who does not beautify the Qur'an with his voice, he is not one of us. But the deeper meaning is the one who is not. Listen closely. The one, use this as a measuring stick for yourself. The one who is not constantly reciting Qur'an to himself, humming the Qur'an out of love for the Qur'an, he is not a mu'min. How many Muslims do you know hum Qur'an in the street and in their work? How many? You know some? Good. I hope you are one of them, inshallah. And I believe that you are one of them. Because if you have memorized the book of Allah, you have tasted the sweetness of those verses. And you do not want to say anything but those words. The companions used to be like bees in the night, buzzing with Qur'an and humming during the day. I will give you a story that is good for the youth. There was a companion, his name is Amr ibn Salima. He was seven years old when he became Muslim. Listen guys, this story is for you. This story is for you. Amr ibn Salima was seven years old when he became Muslim. Let me tell you his story. He memorized the Quran before he became Muslim. How? Why would anyone do that? He used... What? You know the, you know the story? Let me tell you how. I don't think you can guess the story. Amr ibn Salima was seven years old. He used to be a well boy, meaning he used to work on the water well. And his job was to help the people that are passing by get water from the well in the middle of the desert. And they used to give him some money to help them. Now, he was the operator of the well, if you wish. Not like today, you just turn the faucet and you're yawning and the water comes to you. In those days, it was hard work. So, he used to operate this well, and he used to see so many different kinds of people passing by. After the Prophet ﷺ came, and his companions started to learn the Qur'an, he started noticing those people, the Muslims, coming to the well. And he says, they used to hum the Qur'an constantly. They used to hum the Qur'an so much, listen, that I learned the Qur'an from them. He is seven years old. He learned the Qur'an just by hearing it. Now, that part of the story is good and exciting and, and, uh, and uh, uh, inshallah uh, uh, boosts you to learn the Qur'an as a child, but that is not the point I, I want to bring today. How did he learn the Qur'an? What were the companions doing at the well? Humming the Qur'an constantly. Constantly humming the Qur'an. And then every Muslim who came by was saying the word of Allah. So he was sitting there saying, man, what are these guys saying? It sounds good. And he memorized it. One day, his people became Muslims. His town entered Islam. And Rasulullah said, go back to your home and establish the prayer to God. So you know what they said? Oh, Rasulullah, the time is coming, I know, right? How much? I'm coming. I know. Um, establish the prayer to God. So his town, townsfolk said, oh, Rasulullah, we do not know any Qur'an. How can we lead the prayer? So he said, find someone among you who knows the Qur'an. They searched and asked, and guess who it was? Amr ibn Salima, seven years old. Rasulullah said to them, he is your Imam. He is your Imam, because he has the word of Allah with him. SubhanAllah. How did he learn it? Yes, he learned it by listening. 
because I probably only have five minutes left. Let me, let me get to something that every young person says, Allah, unless Allah, Allah, his parents have raised him well or her well. They will tell you invariably, like my son said to me, I was teaching him Quran one day and he said, but Baba, this is too hard to memorize. Right? The Quran is too hard to memorize. I'm too busy. Older people say, I'm too busy. Well, here's a popular excuse. I don't know Arabic. Ah, you heard that one before, right? Yeah? Well, I know three-year-old Muslims who don't know Arabic have memorized the whole book of Allah. Is this a sign from Allah? Yes. Allah said three times in Surah Al-Qamar. So by the way, he's my son. I'm allowed to reprimand him. So I said to my son, you have lied. You have spoken an untruth. You said the book is hard to memorize. And Allah said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذِكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Three times in Surah Al-Qamar. And we have made this book, the Quran, easy to remember. Have you tried? Have you gone to it? Have you tried to take it? Or has shaitan tricked you? Tricked you into saying, I can't do it. I'm 50 years old. I don't know Arabic. That means you have not tried. I am not the one saying you have not tried. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that. He made it easy. You can memorize this book, inshallah. How much more do I have? Or am I there? <laughs> Time's up. Let me just see if there is a... So, real quick. Steps to reconnect to the book of Allah. First step. And it's always the first step. Make dua to Allah. Sincerely. Ramadan is coming up. Beg Allah to be of those who are Ahlul Quran. The people of the Quran. Ask Allah to make you of the one who recites the book day and night. Who hums the book out of love for its verses. Who memorizes the book of Allah. Ask Allah. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِي إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ That's what Sayyidina Shu'aib said in the Quran. Success is from Allah. You will not be able to do it. You take the first step and Allah will come running to you to help you. The second step, know that it is easy to understand the Quran and easy to remember. If you say the Quran is not easy to understand and not easy to remember, you have rejected the words of Allah. Because what did Allah say about the Quran? It is mubin, very clear. And he said, it is easy to remember. Remove the distractions from your life. You guys are getting nervous already? Calm down. Don't listen to music. And don't watch TV. Too much? All the guys got really upset right now. Okay. Let's take it one step at a time. Limit your TV. Is that good? You like that? No, you don't like that one either? Okay, you know what? Fathers. Limit your children's TV and remove music from the home. Play the Quran during the, during the home, in the home, and you will see your children naturally reciting the word of Allah. This is a fact. A third advice. Relax. A third advice. Pick a friend that is also trying to memorize the book of Allah with you. If you find such a friend, hold on to them and use each other to compete in memorizing the book of Allah. And if you cannot find a friend who will help you, ask Allah to help you. And let the companions be your friends and your guides. And the last piece of advice is, take advantage of your free time. Do not waste your free time, but spend every moment reading the book of Allah. If you are a busy adult, like myself, with two full-time jobs and no time to spare, who is the one who controls time? Allah. Does he have the power to slow down your time or speed your time up? What is this called? Barakah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make a man's time be twice as much as another man, even though they are living in the same time. He can stretch your time for you so that you are able to accomplish more with the time that you have. But you must ask Allah for this. And you must have a good intention and you must work hard. Do not let shaitan trick you and tell you that learning the Quran is hard. And last but not least, I want to share with you a story that really moved my heart. There was a, an elderly gentleman in the masjid where I live. 
And he told me, listen closely, brothers and sisters, especially the fathers. I'm going to give you a big guilt trip now. And the mothers, although the responsibility is on the fathers, Islamically. If you pick a good wife, then you win. But if you don't, it's your responsibility. He said, my son is a, the biggest brain surgeon in Massachusetts. He said he's top in his field. He's a multi-millionaire. He has a beautiful wife. Several mansions. He's a Muslim. His father is telling me the story with a tear in his eye. And he said to me, but I have a problem. My son told me he will never pray a rakah in the mosque in his life. He promised his dad, I will never set foot in the masjid. I will never pray one rakah to Allah. He said this to his dad because his dad is telling him, get close to Allah. But his dad did not raise him right initially. He did not give him the tools he needs. Today, your child will be lost when he hears what is on the news. When his friends are bombarding him in high school, telling him, your religion is not good. Look at what your prophet does. With no knowledge, with no power, which is having the book of Allah, your child will be lost. He will not know how to respond. He will not be strong in this society, in this wonderful country which we love. However, you have to be careful not to lose your religion and lose your principles. On the day of judgment, your son will tell Allah, Oh Allah, my father did not teach me. Throw him into the hellfire before me. And you all know this verse in Surah Abasa. Your son will not save you on the last day. He will say, my father did not teach me Quran. So, you must take every effort to make sure that your children have access to that which will save them. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Please do not leave tonight without just one, just one assignment. A page a day, whatever it may be. Start somewhere, bi-ithnillah, and have the goal in mind where we want to be, as Dr. Islam pointed it out, inshallah, every month we have to get through the Quran as best we can. That's a decent goal if it's within your capacity. Can we mention very quickly, we want to get into a quick uh, change up, we have now a few... Uh, one of our surprises is coming up, right? But first we want to give out some prizes before the surprises, that rhymes. Speaking of rhymes, there's rhymes coming up as well, inshallah, that's the first surprise. Alhamdulillah. Um, of the five steps, they were about five or six. I wasn't writing fast enough. The Dr. Islam mentioned to help us reconnect with the Quran anew. Can we start on the brother's side first? Can we mention two of them? Your hand was up first and you had a pencil in yours. We're soon that. Wow, he wrote it on his food box. You're the man, bro. I want to be like you when I grow up. Go ahead. Make dua. Make dua for Allah to help you. Remove the what distractions exactly are you talking about? TV, music. Your friends are gonna kill you. TV and music. Jazakallah khairan. Come get your prize. Sisters, can we? Okay, the sister. Yes, you. Give me two more. It's yours. But raise your voice. I can't hear you. Jazakallah khairan. Pick a friend to help you learn and the other one was? Know that it is easy to memorize the Quran. Back. Jazakallah khairan. Can someone take this back? Can you have a delivery man? An underage delivery man. Jazakallah khairan.